I'd like to share with you a very quick tutorial on geometric interpretation of a complex number. The aim is to give you a vision of how sometimes transparent, intuitive and ultimately simpler the geometric interpretation is comparing to an algebraic one. So the assignment is as follows. We need to draw in a complex plane a region defined by the following inequality. The modulus of z plus 3 is less than the modulus of z plus 4i. So let us draw a complex plane. And to position our region in the complex plane, we need to find its boundary. And the equation defining the boundary is obtained from the region equation by the substitution of the inequality sign with equality sign. So our boundary equation is the modulus of z plus 3 equals the modulus of z plus 4i. And as in our first example, we need to interpret the sums of complex numbers as the differences. For example, the sum of z and 3 should be interpreted as z minus negative 3, while z plus 4i is rewritten as z minus negative 4i. So we draw an arbitrary complex number z. And vector z plus 3 is represented by an arrow with the origin at point negative 3 and the endpoint at point z, while vector z plus 4i is represented by a similar arrow but with the origin at point negative 4i. And as z travels in a complex plane, these two arrows follow its path. Now our boundary equation tells us that the length of these two arrows should be equal. That means that our boundary is a log of soft points equidistant from these two particular points, minus 3 and minus 4i. But what is a set of points equidistant from two particular points? Well, it's a perpendicular bisector to the segment connecting these two points. So what we need to do? We need to draw a segment connecting point negative 1 and negative 4i, split it into halves, and restore the perpendicular bisector from the midpoint. And this is it. This is our boundary. And what our region equation tells us is that the distance from point negative 3 is always less than the distance from point negative 4i. And that means that we should shade the upper region with respect to this line. And now to complete the exercise, let's find the algebraic equation for this boundary. Let's denote our points as a and b. And the coordinates of the midpoint x0 and y0 are obtained as a half of the sums of the corresponding coordinates of the endpoints. So x0 is equal to minus 3 plus 0 by 2, minus 3 halves, while y0 is equal to minus 4 plus 0 by 2, so minus 2. Now we need to find the components of the vector which sets the direction of our boundary line. For this end, first we find the components of vector a, b. So we subtract a coordinates from b coordinates, and we obtain 3 and negative 4. So our directional vector is perpendicular to AB. It's a vector which gives a zero scalar product. So let's denote it as n. And its component, for example, is 4 and 3. And now we write down the equation of our line. x minus x naught divided by nx equals y minus y naught divided by ny. And we plug in all our numbers. x minus minus 3 halves divided by 4 equals y plus 2 divided by 3. And as a result, we obtain y is equal to 3 quarters of x plus 9 eighths minus 2. So it's minus 7 eighths. And that's it. That's our equation for a boundary. And of course, you may solve the same problem with purely algebraical means and treat it as a small homework exercise.